doc is back. Welcome to Medically Speaking with Dr. Winston Alexis, hosted by Tyrone Robertson. Join Doc and his guests as they discuss healthcare and the Caribbean community every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Caribcast.tv, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and most other popular podcast platforms. I didn't grow up here, but Broward County has become home to me. This is where I settled. I raised my family here and started my practice here. For over 20 years, I've represented my neighbors, people who needed help in a stressful time. If you find yourself in need of an attorney, reach out to someone you can trust, someone with a proven track record. When a car accident or personal injury sets you back, call Scott McCullough. 954-989-3435. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this week's episode of Medically Speaking with Dr. Winston Alexis. Doc. What's up? And how are you this fine uh, day? Okay, okay, okay. Good thing I ain't sick though. Well, you know. Because apparently people get privileged treatment in this country. Yes, yes. As we see going on now. And wouldn't require it if they would just wear their mask. Yes, Practice social but, distancing. Yeah, but there's something beyond this to understand, Tiro. What is that now? The rich, famous, and special people get care better than the average human being. Well, this and is by true. the way, that's also a description of republicanism. Not, not the Republic Party. It's about survival of the fittest, and the people who are richest and more fortunate get more privilege. I mean, and I'm not criticizing that, but understand what it means. Yes, yes. This is why I find it very hard to be that kind of person. Why? I come from roots. Of course. And I work my way up. I see my father work like a dog. Yes, yes. They used to call him a hustler. He do so much things, 16 different things to make money, but I went to good schools. And my father's whole dream was that one day I'll become a Republican. You know, he don't like this because he spent his life making sure I'm not going to go through the same inequities. So, and to be truthful, what's happening now is a simple thing. If everybody with corona could get that same treatment a certain person just get, Mm -hmm. nobody will probably die. That's the sad part, that we have it, but not everybody can use it. That is the description of healthcare in America. Yes. We have the best modalities for giving good healthcare, mm-hmm. but only a privileged few get it all. The poorer ones are not, exp- and that's not just health, it's the truth in business. Of course, of course. The people who have a start, like our president before, impossible for them to fail. It's so much money and influence. Uh, just as hard as it is for me and you to become a billionaire over the next day. A decade. small, a small yeah. initial loan of a few uh, million right. dollars. Right, uh, there you go. Yes. But, but, and what the other side is, what I believe in, I don't like giving liberals, uh, understand the philosophy, mm-hmm. not the name, is that somehow I want to make it, but boy, I have to carry a few people with me, you know. But of course. Even if it's my family. Of course. Each one, teach one. Right, right. And then, then my community. And pull one up and with then, you. Yes. I'm not saying that right either, but that's what I come out from. And that's so, what we right. believe in. And before you cast your vote, forget the name. What do these people represent? represent. Yes. And healthcare is a prime example. Yes. Yes. How can we have the best healthcare in the world? Not best healthcare, the ability to give the best healthcare in the world, and we rank number forty in survival in the nation. Right. Third world countries, I think we are about e- equal, like Colombia or some. What the heck is that? Yes, that's right. Because I- it's not available. It's not that we don't have good things to give good healthcare, but it's not available the same way across the board. Agreed. This is a good example of what this pandemic is showing us. So when you hear black people and poor people, uh, it's not about being black and poor mm-hmm. that make you die. Socially, socioeconomically okay. deprived people die of this disease. Huh? 
And and it just when I see it up, I'm, by the way, I'm happy. God hear me. Again, because I'm a so called liberal. I ain't want nobody dead. All right. I am praying like hell for the mighty president to live. <laughs> but I don't mean to say I believe in his principles because I care about the other person. And for all of those who are wearing masks, that's the point. When you wear a mask, you're not thinking about yourself. You think about your children, the neighbor, mm-hmm. the cousin down the road. So understand, oh, I have my rights to wear. So I'm just showing. And, you know, we're going to be talking about how to get health care, how to know about good health care. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That has been the topic a few weeks and is going to go on for a while. The bottom line is we need, we meaning the Caribbean American community, because that's the one I'm really focused on, even though we realize that this is a part of the black diaspora. It's not a separate, we are subgroup within this. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's there's, um, the Kennedys, are Irish American. My boy is what Scottish American. Everybody's something American. So why can't we be Caribbean American? Absolutely. Right? Why we have the best carnival in the world in Trinidad. And we come here and they're naming Coyote after the parade. No, man. And I'm coming to the point why we have and to organize our community. When I say we are talking about you and my son, all your younger generation, get this community in and organize it. Well, and make sure we show this country what we have to offer them. Agreed. agreed. Right? In our food, in our music, just in our ability to whine. <laughs> no, nobody <laughs> whine like a Trinidadian. <laughs> Well, you know, or have uh, fun. Like, uh, listen, we have something to give this country to. We all do, and Jamaicans wine just as well. Thank you. Ah, uh, well, much. let's take a vote. <laughs> Wait, let me let me tell you, we're taking a vote. All right, okay, okay. All the Jamaican whoever go to Trinidad Carnival in Trinidad, ask them who wine the sweetest in their life. Just saying that we have learned. Jamaican do, do well at Jamaican standards. No, we do well on the international. No, no. <laughs> You're like America in health. You're like number 30. No, sir. Rubbish. All the Eastern Caribbean. Rubbish. Rubbish. They could rubbish. wine better rubbish. than rubbish. Now, the sweetest music in the world is a different. You, ah. win. you win going away, my brother. And it's a, di- and it's a different kind of wine. Well, guess. yes. <laughs> and, and really, is a wine by yourself. <laughs> Jamaican. You start, start up in a corner with two Guinness, hot Guinness. No. And no, you keep in time. No, I, I watch all you. No, I can't doc. do it. I watch all you and all you go to film. No. You're watching the wrong set of Jamaicans. <laughs> Nobody, but well, them girls in trade I could. Well, I know about the guys, but those girls could really win. But coming back to LK, yes. you know, that's what we are about. All right. So, so, Doc, you know, what I would like to do, or the, the topic I'd like yeah. to address today, is one that, that, that plagues us. And this is hypertension, high blood pressure. So, if you could, yeah. in your simple terms, the way that you are able to articulate to right. us, right. what is it? All right. I'll add something, one, and then I'll start. Mm-hmm. Hypertension and diabetes, you almost cannot separate them. Okay. They are found out now they are probably genetically associated. Really? Yeah. Because people think genetics mean one gene like six cell. You have it or you don't have it. There are multiple genes operating together. And when you see certain ones of them will give you high blood pressure, another combination will give you diabetes. So they are related. We can't say one related, but they are related. And like you and your first and second cousin, they're related. Wow. These diseases. So it's hard to, in black people especially, do one without the other. Mm. All right? So let's start with the hypertension. First thing, statistics. About 89% of black men end up with high blood pressure. And that don't matter which country you come from. Jamaica, Trinidad, Africa. When you look at the population, listen how we go now. About 86% white men 
So it's a very common disease period. It's just we are more. But look what we're going down now. Uh, black females, mm-hmm. 83. So okay. they have less than the men. Okay. White women, 67. Wow. So we're talking about even though everybody in the world gets high blood pressure, we have gotten a double dose of it. By the way, if you check diabetes, it's about the same statistic. Okay. That's kind of lead us to believe that if you make, if somebody have high blood pressure, make a good guess. They either have diabetes or one of the son or mother or somebody have the same disease. Okay. All right, so let's get back to what it is. Mm-hmm. What is your blood pressure? Your blood pressure is a device that a bunch of doctors over the years come up with to look at the well-being of the cardiovascular system, meaning your heart, all the blood vessels, your kidney, liver, all of them involved in the circulatory system. As a matter of fact, everything in your body, your muscle, your eye, everything involves blood vessels. All right? So we needed, we we suspected that the pressure Mm -hmm. in a blood vessel have a lot to do with damage that this thing can cause. Let's take a common hose. You open it a little bit, the water will probably never re- reach the end. And if you could still squeeze the ho- hose. Mm-hmm. There's no resistance. As the resistance, the power ahead, you have to turn it up to over, overgo the overcome the natural resistance of the, of the hose walls. That's natural, right? And just imagine the whole wall, the hose get harder. Mm-hmm. You can't dilate it. So how the water is going to pass? More force from the heart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we have learned to measure the resistance in the blood vessels. That's what your blood pressure is. So that's what those numbers represent? Yeah. How much resistance the muscle of the wall is giving you. Okay. All right? And from that, we could draw certain conclusions. Over the years, they fight, they have gotten normal for people. I won't even go through them yet. You could find that out. There's, just remember, there's normal for young people under 25. And there's a different normal. There's, like yes, for the middle mm-hmm. and late. Okay. But mainly, the discrepancies between early and late. Middle kind of somewhere in between there, okay? So what this pressure is doing is indirectly telling me the resistance of the blood vessels versus the power with which the heart is have to push the blood. Okay. That's what we measure. So when you have high blood pressure, it means the resistance is hard and the heart is working overtime, overtime. pushing okay. this damn thing. Okay. That's the basic reason behind blood pressure. Right? And the harder the heart have to work, the easier for it to begin not doing the job well. You work it so hard, it's swelling and it can't pump no more. And the pump and the, the blood back up in your, in your heart because it can't pump it out. It end up in your lungs and we call it heart failure. Okay. Right? So that's one of the effects of high blood pressure. Heart failure. failure. Too much work for the heart to do. All right? The second thing is all these blood vessels are going into organs. And the organs can cause dysfunction because of the resistance. They're not getting good perfusion of blood. So it could damage your kidney. It could damage your eye. You understand why? It could damage the blood vessels in your brain. Okay, all right. Because the more the resistance is the harder this thing have to pump. And sometimes the weaker the blood vessels get. So they could pop and cause a little hemorrhage. Right? Or there's also a connection between blood pressure and cholesterol and atherosclerosis. So in addition to having resistance, and by the way, when the high blood pressure is due to resistance, it's called essential hypertension. Mm -hmm. That's the one we think is genetic. That's the one we think most people in the world have. But you could also get high blood pressure from hypothyroidism. You could get it from certain kidney diseases. 
So there are other things that can cause secondary hypertension, but they are in the minority. And they are actually treatable. Treat the hypothyroidism. You correct it, the pressure gone. Not so with essential. Hear me, people, and the one we have is it ain't going nowhere. So you have to learn to manage it, people. In other words, you can't cure it. Patient tell me, oh, but but last year it was normal. Mm-hmm. It's this year. <laughs> like patient tell me, oh, you know, it was never high. I know, but it started now. Like if it's some curse, if you, it mean no. Most of it is genetic, essential now, not the cause, genetic, and apparently. We get a little more dose of it. All right. All right. All right, Doc, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to dig into this topic a little more. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Neurosurge Associates is a full-service urology practice in Plantation, Florida, with three board-certified urologists offering expert care in most disciplines of general urology. At the helm is Dr. Paul Kahn, who is board certified in urology, a fellow of the American College of Surgeons, and an expert in robotic surgery. As a proud Jamaican American, Dr. Kahn attended medical school at the University of the West Indies and completed his residency at the University of Miami Jackson Memorial. Since 1983, Dr. Kahn with his dedicated team have been committed to providing the best possible care to patients. Call 954-474-2929 to schedule your appointment today. That's 954-474-2929. And we're back to medically speaking with Dr. Winston Alexis. So, Doc, hypertension now. So you're telling me that a good percentage, a very high percentage of this is genetic? Yes. So... You are saying then that most people who have hypertension or high blood pressure, at some point or the other, they didn't have it when they were younger, as they get older now, but it's, it's, right. been, it's been dormant? Very good. There's something in a gene called expression. Okay. You're going to see that. Even though you have a gene, it may not ever be expressed in you. Uh, That's where environment comes in. Okay. You have to mix that genome with the environment in which you live okay, for the thing to express itself. So most people who are carrying that gene probably don't express it. The ones who express is that combination of how many genes they have out of the hundred that's causing it. Remember, this is not a one gene thing. Right, right. Then you add to that environment. Then you come up with the people who experience it. Example. Example. You might go through one generation where nobody have it. Mm-hmm. But the generation live in the country in Jamaica, they're eating fish, they catch down the road, they're exercising all the time, they have no stress. The gene don't express itself. Okay. Now you come up Kingston, and you're afraid man bussy in your house with gun mm-hmm. fire. Mm-hmm. You're afraid to go in the bank, they might stick up the bank you day. Yes, yes. You're afraid to go to sleep at night. That's a different set of environment, conditions that can ex- make that gene begin to express itself. Okay, okay. And one big bully, one big cause, v- environmental, not by itself, right. but can influence your genetic makeup is S-T-R-E-S-S, stress. Yes. Yes. Okay. You know, it's amazing. We come back to the same three when you read hypertension. Stress, mm-hmm. eat well, mm-hmm. Exercise. exercise. Mm-hmm. But you can't do it when you already have the damn disease and you're fat like 395 so pounds. Right. So that's my next yeah. question for you now. So I I have been diagnosed as being hypertensive. I start to adjust my diet. I've lost weight. I am, I am living better. Mm-hmm. I Am I in a position to stop Taking the medication no. that is managing. No. Okay. What you would do. Ladies is, and gentlemen, listen to this carefully. Yeah, you will prevent the complication that actually kill you. It's not yeah. the blood pressure that kill you. It's what the blood pressure do to the heart. Mm-hmm. 
And what the blood pressure do to the kidney? Okay. And what the blood pressure do to the liver? What the blood pressure do to your brain? When you do those things we talk about, you lessen the chances that the blood pressure will cause these complications. Right. The blood pressure ain't going no way. You're managing it. Okay. So my friends who are listening and people, my peers, yeah. who have now lost 15, 20, 25 pounds and the pressure been been so low that you decide that you're coming off the no. All right. No. Please speak to your physicians about this. The pressure, the re- what is happening is you, are be- you have a sign that it's not going to cause a stroke. All right. And it's not going to cause kidney failure. Okay. And it's not going to go half failure with all your foot swelling up on you. You can't breathe. But it ain't gone nowhere. You are removing some of the factors. You see, disease do not all have the same endpoint. Mm-hmm. Give you an expert. Me and my father had prostate cancer. You notice I'm still here. Yes. He died when he's 62 mm-hmm. because he never took the preventative measures that I took. Right. Poor fella, right. he didn't know. Right. He was drinking coconut water because it make him pee a lot and he pee clear. Well. And he started drinking all kind of bush. And he, 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 if, uh, his son is a big time doctor in Washington, D.C. And tell me nothing. But what you're bringing up is important it because is, is. I, I always give personal experience because me ain't different from nobody, mm-hmm. right? And I think when people know their doctor has gone through some of these things, they could understand, yes, yes. right? When I approach my father, when I find out he have stage four cancer all over the place, but I, I said, Daddy, I'm not dying because he's the man I respect the most in the world. Mm-hmm. Daddy, how come you don't tell nobody? He said, me, you know what they're talking about. I can't have prostate cancer because I never had venereal disease. I said, Daddy, what the hell are you talking about? What is the connection with venereal? But that is what poor knowledge. Yes. This is why we're going through all of this. As you talk to the people just now, listen, people. You yes. cannot cure essential hypertension, but you could control the hell out of it. Like I'm doing with my prostate. All right. So I have a, another question. Another question. I have another comment now. Yeah. So, you know, again, for the guys, for the guys, the guys have this thing where they don't want to take the meds because they hear that it, it, it causes ED. Right. I want them to go online mm-hmm. and just put hypertension medication. Okay. About 10 pages long. Yes. Why you think it's so? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because different one cause different type of side effects, and your doctor could find one that don't cause. Co- not all of them cause ED. Go and tell the man. The boy will not stand that attention. Go and tell him, Doc, I need some help. Yes. But you say, no woman, tell your partner, boy, don't take that high blood pressure medicine. It gonna make you can't have an erection. Well, crap. Some of them do. All right. Not only them. Yes. If you know the amount of medicine that causes ED, and when you read the fine print, nobody pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. But leave it to your professional. Now. He, if you come to me, well, the, guy, as, the guy's, well, not, the the guy's I, not coming. I to was you. about <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't letting them through the door. Yeah, man. If a woman come to me and tell me, Doc, I lose my desire, mm-hmm. I will ask her what medicine you on and thing. Yes, yes. Well, you know what happened. And whatever she taking, switch it. They have a billion. How oh, we think they have so many medications? So they are right. Some forms do cause that, but the majority of high blood pressure medicine does not call erectile. Add to this, you're 55 and you think it should still get an erection like you're 25. <laughs> so you're blaming <laughs> hypertension medicine for what happened to you because you're getting old. Listen to Dr. Alex. I know all you want to hear this. So you also need to make a trip to your urologist. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Doc, I'm having no reaction. What's going on? And, and is there anything you could do for me? Mm-hmm. Instead of showing me, uh, yeah, you're going to have a good erection when you die from a stroke. <laughs> right? They, they, well, when they come for you, you have an erection, but your stroke gone. Do not stop taking your high blood pressure. It's an in 
curable disease, but thank God, manageable. Well managed or yeah. easily managed. Uh, we can easily manage. All right. But but again, just please take note of that 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 point that if you have been diagnosed with hypertension, manage it. Yeah. And and, and don't again you lose a few pounds, you adjust your diet, sure, you need it will, some exercise. The, the requirement will go down. Yes. But don't stop well, you're not taking cured. your meds. Don't Until stop. your doctor and if he tells you that you need to run out the office. All right. <laughs> Take note of that. Please. And again, the lady tell me don't call her name. Mr. Alexis, take it at 80 something. You know why? All her aunts had diabetes. All her aunts had high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. All the men on her side have high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Right? Then two of her siblings already have massive heart attacks. It's the, every, even though she complained, oh, it, it hurt my belly. Take the medicine. Right. And take some Pepto Bismol or something, but take the damn <laughs> belly hurting will kill you. High blood pressure oh, yeah. will if it's not managed. And if it's managed good, you can live so years and you die from something else. Yes, yes. All right. So I've got some questions, but mm. we've, we've kind of answered uh, uh, quite a few of them. But, but it's good this, to go through it again. But this right. one, this one I want to, you know. So, somebody who has not yet been diagnosed with hypertension, what kind of symptoms might they see? Or that's, experience? that's what's dangerous. None. None. When it starts to damage your organism, right? or you go to your doctor's office and he find it. Therefore, good, very good question. Mm-hmm. From the time you become a young adult, and if I had to choose a time, it would be college age. You need to take your blood pressure from time to time, three, four times a year at least. So that, you, was, that leads me yeah. to another question then. So when we were younger and, and before being diagnosed with any of these ailments, yeah. we were seeing the doctor annually. And we weren't really checking blood pressure no. outside of our visit, our annual physical or whatever the case. No, they never had that in there. What is our annual physical? First time I hear that is here. <laughs> right. There's no such so, thing. You go doctor when you're sick. Right. That's so, need to change. Good thing you bring it up. All right. So how do we how do we now, I guess, inform, educate? Is this something that in the medical field that is being addressed? No. Why? We don't care. They don't care. Don't say we don't care. We well, care. Doctors don't. <laughs> unless you're special. <laughs> well, you go with a nosebleed, they check your nosebleed. Huh? And there is a rule. In America, every patient that come in my office, we are supposed to take their pleasure. Do you know that? Everyone. Patient always come, oh, I don't want it. I say, my dear, you don't want me to lose my license. You, know? you sit down in this chair. We're going to weigh you. And you're going to have your blood pressure taken. Mm-hmm. So you could go through a significant portion of your life without ever having your blood pressure check unless you get sick. Now, once you're an adult, we do it at your annual exam. My point is you need to start it before you go through routine exams. Interesting. Right? When you Like when you go to college, at least once or twice a year or more, you go get your blood pressure checked. And you get get some basic lab work done, right? And and it's covered for adults. I don't know what pediatricians do, but they need to do it. As lo- once you start becoming a teenager and coming, parents have to take the teenagers in, if just to do their blood pressure, and the doctor counsel them on eating and exercise. That's what you need to, and don't wait till you're thirty eight to go for your first annual exam. Mm-hmm. Because it's covered by insurance. Yeah. So, outside of, outside of, you know, again, yeah. you said there are no symptoms. Until it's ready to lick it so up. We're, then we're back to what we have been speaking about frequently, which is screening. Yes. And I just told you the screening ought to start long before it is. We start it as adults. We need to start it as teenagers. All right. So, because by the way, the disease take a time to develop. You aren't born with it, mm-hmm. 
right? And it, who knows when it's going to manifest itself, some earlier, some later. But we need to pick it up as soon as it comes, just like cancer. We can't prevent it, but if we pick that guy up as soon as we can, and we follow certain regiments, so therefore it should be a routine part of a teenager life to get his blood pressure done. I can't tell you. Maybe pediatricians could tell you. Do we follow that? No. First time I started getting blood pressure on a regular week, I was at Howard University Medical School. First time. Other times I do it whenever I was sick. They do it. Outside of that, no. No, no. Never went anywhere anytime. Interesting. So by the time most of us find out we have it, it's been there uncontrolled for a long while. All right. So one more question before we take a shot. Yeah. So if hypertension has gone and has not, or has been going on yeah. and has not been diagnosed, what initial types of damage Okay, you see. depends on your lifestyle. And that's what save we in the islands maybe early. Ex- guess what they are again, Tirun? By now you should get this mantra. Ex- exercise. And? Diet. And? Stress. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do to try to prevent it from starting. The genes are there. Mm-hmm. But there are some things that would make it start later. And... Some people even believe that who knows, we don't know for sure, maybe it might prevent it. But you're you're living that lifestyle because there's no way you could know if you have high blood pressure early. But, boy, if you live this good lifestyle, even if it come, it, it, it can come less, and I might even catch it before I would normally have catch it when I'm 40 years old. Right, right. So lifestyle is number one in high blood pressure. Number one is lifestyle, not medication. Mm-hmm. Lifestyle before you assume you might you at risk for it. So start as a black man. If I had to guess of any disease he will develop, high that, blood pressure. That's it. Yeah, that's how often it. Eighty nine percent. That's, That's nice. almost the whole population. That's it. That's it. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back to Medically Speaking with Dr. Winston Alexis. Dr. Ronald Moore and his team at Minimally Invasive Surgery perform laparoscopic robotic procedures with the utmost precision. As a bariatric surgery specialist, Dr. Moore performs a range of surgeries and operations focusing on areas and organs of the abdomen. For gastric sleeve, bypass, and banding, to endoscopic balloon, and hernia procedures, call the Office of Minimally Invasive Surgery at 954-797-4220 to schedule your appointment. Minimally Invasive Surgery has two convenient Broward County locations to serve you. Call 954-797-4220 to schedule your appointment today. And we're back to medically speaking with Dr. Winston Alexis. So, Doc, we spoke about... This whole screening, yeah. getting it started earlier. But if I am screened, let's say I'm a young man of 18, 19 yeah. years old. Yeah. And you screen me today and my blood pressure looking a little bit high based on my age. Yeah. And you, you, you did mention yeah. that there are probably three ranges that we should be looking sure. at. Sure. The young. But you're a little high for whatever. But I'm a little high for my range. How would we then, uh, in other words, what would be the the recommendation to okay. that young man or that young woman to okay. say, okay, your pressure is looking a little high. Talk to your parents uh, or or maybe for whatever reason, the parents are not yeah. there. Then. Let me put it that way. How do you address that? Because the, the key thing that I think that is happening here is that you, I, if you tell that to my 18-year-old, she's not coming home to tell me that. Ah. Yeah. Uh. Therein lies. You do like my father. Say, listen, you better go tell your father because I'm calling him. You <laughs> you know, that's what my school used to do. Yeah, but we don't have that anymore. Okay, no. so you as a anymore. parent take interest when your child go there. Uh, so no, dear. Yeah. Oh, no. And if you're under 18, mm-hmm. you have the right to everything they do on that person. Except 
contraception, you don't need parental content, consent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Abortions, you don't need parental consent. Okay. STIs, you don't need them, STDs. Everything else, you could go and demand it. All right. So that takes care of the yes. youngsters. But when they hit that 18, doc, that's a magical yeah. age with yeah. these children yeah. here in the U.S. of okay. where we are. Okay. All right. And I, 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 based on what you're telling me and thinking back even to myself, when I was 18 and my, from 18 to, to late 20s, you know, because I'm going to say that my late 20s is when I became <laughs> responsible. I, you still, I, no, I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I heard, you're still irresponsible. <laughs> but anyway, I'll accept that. Go on. I, I wasn't concerned. Oh, my pressure a little high. Sure. Let right. me let me go walk and right. let me go run or let me go play some football and drink some coconut water and, right. and that kind of thing. So w- yeah. what I'm getting at is that, it, I mean, apart from what we're doing, because I, yeah. I, I, I preach screening yeah. Yeah. to everybody yeah. that I talk to now as a... As a Young or yeah. maybe middle aged yeah. adult, but I preach screening to my peers. All right, All right. But what do we do for those youngsters between that eighteen and thirty? Okay, who are invincible? All right, yeah. But you're talking about still having parental control or not? No, yet they don't have any parental control. This or, is, this or if they're using my money, if I pay in the school fees. Listen, that, that's, that's why you think difference. why you think all my children leave the house at eighteen? <laughs> if I pay in your school fees, I will meddle. <laughs> if you don't want me meddle, spend your own damn money. But let, let's come back. So I'm saying, if the child is still under your, Absolutely. you parents should take over and say, listen. Absolutely. Are you taking your blood pressure in the in the all in right. the unit? So that's, so that's one yeah, scenario. Parent, that's, get involved yes, if you can. Yes. All right. So as a matter of fact, good point. Good right. point. Good point. All right. If you can't, no. all right. Parents get yeah. involved. All right. All right. So you, next point, no. If you can't, right. Them, them, a, them, them, them can't live by the rules of the house. Right. They move out. They're eighteen, all right. nineteen. So 20. there is an organization named Caribbean Connection. <laughs> And part of what they're doing is to educate our public. This is what we're doing now. All right. All right. Spread the word in our community. Yes. And, you know, we as Caribbean people talk to each other all the time. We don't even look at ads. We get things from off. Yes. Spread the word that high blood pressure, you are born with the potential. So it can happen any time. Yes. Right? And the quicker you jump on it. hmm Right, so that even the kid feel an obligation from the time they're small. Get them into the routine. When you go to the preacher and say, "By the way, you're taking the blood pressure," mm-hmm. many pediatricians don't. don't. Right, right. Remember, we are workmen. The less time we could get away as doctors, yeah, because we think we are making enough money, so we're spending as least least time. This is no longer an honorable profession. It's a profession. It's a business. I know damn profession mm-hmm. where we work for money. Mm-hmm. So you come telling me, oh, you are the best doctor. Oh, yeah? Okay. Best doctor is one that show empathy, who care about you, your family. Good doctor is what people like me doing. Mm-hmm. Who going out? Yes, I given all this information for yes, free. Yes, yes. I could tell people, oh, if you say, come to my office. I don't, you ever hear me say that yet? Mm-mm. I never invited one person into my office. I have information to give to my community. And there's some selfish motives. When they hear how good I am on this, they want to come. They're compelled. Oh, they say this man, these are special <laughs> breeder doctor. So I don't want you to feel I'm doing it all. Right, right. A part of it is given to my community. Yes. Because they have given so much to me. Remember that people were we saying. What this program is a part of is an organization contacted me to do this. Yes, yes. Because they want us to become a voice in our community. Absolutely. Absolutely. You understand? So you, this community have to get educated, and if they are, they'll pass it down to their children. Yes. That's my. And the parents, from the time the child is a baby, and you can not to the pediatrician, for mumps or measles mm. or sniffles, always ask the pre- You took a blood pressure, yeah. So there's a record. All right. So 
how many times or how much how much monitoring is is required before you can say okay your high, your pressure has been high for you know how many readings right. or how many weeks All or right. how many months before you diagnose? All right, somebody? very good question. I don't know what it is for young people mm-hmm. because nobody has ever done this where we and you trying to create All right. that we look for diabetes and high blood pressure in young black children because mm-hmm. we get it earlier and worse. Yes, yes. That is not a part of the screening order. Really? No, it is not. Okay. When you're them age, all we do is give you your, 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 your vaccinations. Wow. And when you get cold or sniffles, we treat it. Or you get eczema, we treat it. Mm-hmm. Or you have diarrhea, we treat it. But mm-hmm. there are no, all the, all the screenings are done very early. And all the vaccinations are done very early, everything else. So we need to probably bring up and with a pediatrician and say, hey, why aren't we taking these people? I don't know how often, maybe once every two years, I don't know. But have a chat, something. Right, right. Since it's a disease, the quicker you pick it up, mm-hmm. the more you can treat it. Pick it up early. Right, right. And we are not making that effort. No, we're not. You bring up not. a good point in yeah. young people. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know how to, to answer the question. You bring it up and you bother me. Number one, when you ask me all them hard questions for me. You, you tell I'm, a me gyna- about that. I'm a gynecologist. Yes, but you say you know about medicine. And I want to know. Medicine that's- for black people. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that's a good point I'm making. I trained in a black school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me give you a story about ethnicity and medicine. I was in OBGYN at Jackson teaching. And the guys in the emergency room, the other ethnicity, when black people come in with sickle cell crisis, none of them know what to do. And the internists, they used to come and ask me, where do I say, no, don't transfuse them. Really? A six hemoglobin in a, in a person with it. It's high. If you don't have sickle cell, you're fainting if you have that, so you don't give them blood. You need to give them a lot of fluid. Why? Simple. Because the cells are abnormal, they clog up all the blood vessels, like a log jam. What is the best thing to get rid of a log jam, Tyrone? More water. Exactly. You hide. But boy, you ready for medical school? Yeah, you know. So those people didn't need transfusion. They need a bunch of fluid. I used to go down and they said, Doc, well, we, we transfuse in them and there. I said, you try. How much is the seven? Are you losing your mind? <laughs> that is super normal in a, even though it's abnormal in a regular person. Yes, yes. Point I'm making because I went to a black school. There are very two things about black diseases. I you know how you think I could come and talk to you about high blood pressure. When I was in OBGYN, every pregnant woman that come in there have high blood pressure. pressure. So you yeah. learn about that. Right, so it's not strange. I know about my people' disease. It's because my education was along that. While I go to the white hospitals and the patients say they don't want to see no black doctor. So you understand? So we have to set up our own guidelines. If anybody know pediatrician, you should question them. By the way, how often should my my child when they're in grade school and high school? How often should do the yes, blood pressure? Yes. All right, so let's let's get to let's get to adults now. Yeah. So again, when somebody is screened and their pressure now, so an adult now, not middle age, let's say somebody in their late twenties, right. early thirties, maybe forty, who previously mm-hmm. never had high blood pressure, and they have now gone for their annual right. checkup, which everybody should be doing, for sure. All right. And if you come to my office, I'm going to weigh you. And take your blood pressure. Even people go, oh God, you don't have to weigh me again. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. So after somebody has been screened, mm-hmm. their pressure is looking a little high. What next? But what we, ain't, we ain't even know what the screening is. Screening is not a one-time blood pressure. No, I understand that. So that's the question. Yeah, okay. So I say, honey, look. Well, now I send them to the Primary care. Mm-hmm. Typical doctor. Listen, I want to make some money off of OBG. Okay. <laughs> but if I had to, I would say this is what you do. You need to go home. Mm-hmm. This is screening. You, make, 
you need to get up in the morning, sit down for 15 minutes. Why? Blood pressure tend to fluctuate during the day depending on your stress level. So a pressure you take after lunch when your boss kick your butt mm-hmm. is going to show completely different. So you, your day, your stress is influence. As a rule, I think, not quite sure, but I think so. Blood pressures tend to be higher in the afternoon than the morning. That's all about, right? All right, so you get up in the morning. This is what the average screening is. You sit down for 15 minutes before you do anything. Maybe drink a cup of tea or something. Then you take your blood pressure three times. Well, at least twice in a row. You write it down on a piece of paper with the date. You do that every day for five days straight. And then you take it to your doctor. He will average it out and tell you whether it's really high. One blood pressure alone do not make you... Unless it's like 220 over 100. Of course, of course. And you're on the verge. So don't bother coming to my office and say, Doc, but you said your pressure is 200 over 195 and you say you have to take it three times. No, you need to be in the hospital. Yes, yes, yes. But generally, that's how you do the screening, not one time. Right. Right? Now, if you have, we don't do it before you get one abnormal blood pressure. Mm-hmm. But when you go to the doctor, sit down for a few minutes before you take your blood pressure. If it is not high, it's fine. So what about this thing now? I believe they call it, is it white coat? That Does is... that really exist? No. <laughs> what white coat is telling you is stress is making the blood pressure go up. Uh... It's not that nothing wrong with it. But if stress is doing that when you have a white coat on, mm-hmm. believe me, stress is doing it when you don't have the white coat on. All right. So it's still an indication that something is wrong. They come in, oh, I have white coat. I say, what? Mm-hmm. No, man. You go and see your internist, white coat tail. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Doc, give me your, your closing statements about hypertension and the Caribbean American community. Okay. Good question. We need to go back to some of the things that was important to us back home. Why? We live in a relatively stress-free country. Mm -hmm. We might think we have stress because we can drive our bends and we can live in a big house up on Stony Hill. Mm -hmm. Believe me, there ain't no stress. That's just wishful thinking. (laughs) But when you see the man Friday night beating some booze, mm-hmm. talking foolishness, going and see cricket, watching football, right? Regain yourself to death. All of that is known as relieving stress. So what is what is thought to be stress here mm-hmm. is not the same stress in our country. Right, right. So we have to make that transition when we get here. That things that are not stressful to us home is why. When my wife, my wife goes say, I, I make this up. We ain't drinking as often as we used to. <laughs> right? We are playing domino as much as we used to. We worrying about the rent. We worrying about ED. Uh, we worrying about all kind of food. So the point is lifestyle changes here. Changes the mitigation mitigating factors. So I'm sure we are seeing earlier manifestation of hypertension in America, mm-hmm. right? And higher levels of blood pressure. All right. So we need to be careful in our community. Um, actually, some of, some of what you just said has led me to another question. What role does alcohol, fried foods... All right. Good, know, very good question. ...play in, in this whole thing of hypertension? There's a connection mm-hmm. between cholesterol plaques and high blood pressure. Okay. So those who have high blood pressure tend to form plaques quicker. Mm-hmm. One don't cause the other, but you see more of it. In mm-hmm. it. Okay. So we have to be awfully careful about cholesterol mm-hmm. in people who have high blood pressure. Okay. Because of the connection. One don't cause the other, but it's also there. And remember, what does plaque do? Plaque narrow. 
the vessel even more so there's even more resistance. Gotcha. All right. So it makes the resistance worse. They go hand in hand. Atherosclerosis and high blood pressure. That might be part of the bunch of genes that causing it too. Mm-hmm. Right? So we have to be careful about cholesterol and weight. Okay. That's why weight is so important in high blood pressure, keeping it down, because that will keep down mitigating circumstances, things that make it worse, cholesterol level. I'm not, by the way, diabetes has a negative effect on hypertension, and they often go together. Mm-hmm. So keeping the weight down will keep diabetes more out of the picture, will keep cholesterol more out of the picture. So the level of heart disease and strokes get less. Because they are related to atherosclerosis, okay. heart attacks. All right. All right, so we need, I ain't finished yet. So I have quite a bit of friends who are promoters. <laughs> <laughs> Were you claiming you try? <laughs> no, I ain't trying to call you, but if you happen to be one of them, and the guys like Gary Hart and them thing, we as a community have to support these events. Because because have, when but, you go to them, you relieve it stress. Yes, yes. So, uh, so, so uh, like you as a physician, <laughs> me as a promoter, yeah. I'm providing a, a, a great service to it's the community. Sent especially to high blood pressure and sugar. All right. <laughs> so now when you put out your commercials, you have to put, help your high blood pressure. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Come to this fair. No, no, no. That's, no, a, that's a good idea. I'll right, tell right, you, right, but right. honestly, in, in all joke aside, stress reduction, and right. I don't have the answer how to do all of this. Some people need help with it. Sometimes all you need is go to an extra vacation. Mm-hmm. You know, but they remember, high blood pressure itself doesn't kill you. It's what it does to damage the other organs of your heart, your kidney, your liver, and your brain is what actually kill you. So I right, forget... Try to avoid the complication, not try to avoid the high blood pressure. Yes. It's there. Yes, yes. Therefore, take your medicine. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap for this episode of Medically Speaking with Dr. Winston Alexis. New episodes are available every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on your favorite podcast platform. Right. Google Podcasts. <laughs> Apple Podcast, Spotify. Doc. And remember now, as soon as the pandemic over, right? The <laughs> we call the promoters <laughs> will be hitting the stage. Make sure get ready. <laughs> Am I saying right? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, they they're boiling, they're waiting. Get ready. And you might get rid of a little bit. You notice I duck the question about alcohol. Yes, yes. Alcohol make everything bad except stress. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Medically Speaking with Dr. Winston Alexis is produced and presented by the Caribbean American Connection. Talk to you soon. Take care. Goodbye. For the absolute best obstetrics and gynecology care, call South Florida OBGYN at 954-452-4377. Schedule your appointment today with Dr. Winston Alexis, who has been serving the women of South Florida for over 25 years. Conveniently located in Plantation, Florida, the courteous and professional team at South Florida OBGYN are standing by to assist you. Schedule your appointment today by calling 954-452-4377. We appreciate your time with us on Medically Speaking with Dr. Winston Alexis, hosted by Tyrone Robertson. Join us next Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on CaribCast.tv, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and most other popular podcast platforms. Doc is back. Although the host and guests are qualified professionals, they assume no responsibility for inaccuracies, omissions, inconsistencies, and any slight of people or organization. Listeners should use their own judgment or consult an expert or their personal physician for specific applications to their individual medical problems.